This is the GV Podcast, a variety review podcast featuring two of the three idiots giving their thoughts on cartoons and anime. This is an opinion-based podcast, and there's no way we're saying our thoughts and opinions are objective. Keep this in mind and enjoy the show. Oh, is that your son? Yeah. I'ma kill it. Don't you do it. I'ma do it. Don't you do it. Damn it! Jesus Christ, man. Hello, everybody. <laughs> My name is Jackson. Are you a man or are you water? Because if you're Fahrenheit, then you're a man. If you go by Celsius, you're just water. Hello, everybody. My name is Mayhem. <laughs> I'm Jitsu. I'm Duke. And if you use Celsius, you're just a man made of water. If you use Celsius, then you're from the rest of the world. <laughs> <laughs> if you sell sus, then you're the Among Us. Yeah. <laughs> And today we're talking about <laughs> The Revenge of Cooler, the Dragon Ball Z abridged movie. That guy, that negative something Kelvin, which would be really I, fucking cold. <laughs> absolute zero. Yeah. Negative something Kelvin, yes. <laughs> Who is this Kevin guy? <laughs> what does he have to do with temperature? Okay. Not spoiler thoughts of this is honestly just not spoiler thoughts of cooler. The, the the funny thing is is that this abridged version is probably one of like that's the best part about the movies for the abridged is that like how much that they just do the movie. Yeah. And this one has to be like the most I I, I believe this one has the most shown of the movie in it and kind of stays on course like it keeps its balance the most, I think. And I think that's why it also works the best. Because every time, um, cause like, especially the earlier movies, it's like they kind of completely change the, the purpose of the main villain that trying to destroy Christmas or whatever, like they do that. But this one is just full on coolers here because his brother is, might, might not be dead, even though everybody knows he's not dead. <laughs> Jinzo, are you looking up translating Celsius and Fahrenheit? Kelvin and Fahrenheit. Kelvin and Fahrenheit. <laughs> Sorry, excuse me. Oh, that's the formula for it? You can mathematically just... Oh, that's cool. You, don't, math, don't do the mathematical equations for Kelvin with ever, whatever the fuck you want to do. But it makes so much sense, look! <laughs> it's, Kelvin is the temperature of stars! It's Kelvin is stars, Celsius is water, and Fahrenheit is human. But this shit says that 5 Kelvin equals negative 450 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> I'll kill you. <laughs> You speak math with me again. <laughs> hey, so, uh, anyway. <laughs> uh, so my, th my thoughts on, uh, Cooler? Yeah. It's pretty cool. Uh, uh... I, will say, I will say, uh, the one thing that TFS got up on him, he's so much cooler in, uh, <laughs> in the abridged uh, version. Well, of course he's cooler. He's cooler. Shut up. <laughs> but you know what I mean. I'm like, he is such a, uh, better uh, character his... in the abridged version. Because, I'm going to say this, his voice in Japanese, or sorry, his voice in the original version, like uh, any version other than this one, I'll say, it's okay. It's an average voice. I'm pretty sure they go for, I, I haven't heard in a while. No matter what, you cannot beat Chris Guerrero. Chris I'm Guerrero. I'm sorry, it just immediately adds 30 points to his score. Like, hit, like hit. flat out. That, that's the crazy part with just a lot of shows and stuff recently, is just like, the amount of voice actors that are just able to just go off and Chris Guerrero is definitely one of them the fact that he does cooler so well and then an actual like made anime he does Einzul Gone and he does he does so many good characters and most of the time it's just his voice that's just his normal voice the way that he talks and then and then there's Gecko Moria <laughs> yeah but it's just it's unbelievable just like this one like the, the, the he did this before overlord right i believe so yes it's just uh, overlord i believe was around tw yeah it's 2018 okay really and it's only so, been out that that little yeah. amount of time revenge of cooler uh tfs let me check it was definitely before season three. Oh yeah let me check 2012 six years prior six years prior and they already had one of the greatest voice actors of the modern time. Yeah. That's crazy. Like 110%. It's Chris Guerrero has just one of those voices. He has one that, of those voices. Definitely. Just 
give him a proper speech and holy shit will he go off and that's and that's the best part about this entire special the abridged version is just they keep giving cooler the best lines yeah <laughs> they I keep mean, giving him like crazy movie one liners and it's like damn <laughs> this guy's awesome holy a bunch shit. of crazy movie one liners i uh, were any of those not movie references i will ask i i don't like, know like that's he with a capital h by the way i f- i feel like some of them like i i would feel like it's a third of them would were were movie references yeah i think i think they Obviously, they, I planted a dumbass tree is definitely one of theirs. <laughs> yeah, no, I yeah, can yeah. guess. <laughs> they, I think they, they specifically reference like they'll they'll change the name of the character. We watched in Canadian English, which that's so. just the best way to rewatch the series. To rewatch, <laughs> I will specify because if you if you're watching for the first time, just enjoy it naturally. If you're rewatching it like for the twenty millionth time, like us, <sighs> then go in and uh, put on the Canadian subtitles, and it's hilarious. Yes more layers but to the joke what was, what, what, what was uh, your thing jinsu what was uh, your non-spoiler on cooler abridged and non-abridged the the non-abridged version was was interesting because it establishes this great character it establishes a really cool character and his Should like trans- and his transformation but i don't know it feels like if it just felt like frieza Coming in and doing shit, <laughs> yeah. um, and that's the, did it. that's very much the joke in the abridged series is that everything that Cooler does is just what Frieza already did, and it's kind of like you guys really, uh, you guys really, you guys really threw a fucking pin in the dark and still somehow landed on the same spot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You guys trying not to be the same, but here you are being the exact same. Yeah. And then, and then his little cooler squad is just a small guinea for us. <laughs> he he actually because cooler actually pays his his minions. That's why he can only afford three of them. Because <laughs> 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 with how much on hands experience the job is, they definitely deserve a lot more than what they, they. They have to be elite, yeah. right? Oh yeah, like, they, yeah, that's his elite force. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, what was that line from uh, the the series of Fre- uh, where Frieza? Was talking to. Uh, it smells like Zarbon in here. He was talking to Zarbon, and he uh, has that whole moment of just like, like, uh, uh, talking about like, I-, I pay you, and it's like you don't pay us. It's semantics. <laughs> no, no, it was, no, it's, it was, it was yeah. like, why don't you do the fucking work? Oh, cause it's hard. What the fuck do I pay you for? You don't pay us, sir. Kills him. <laughs> you know what I pay our minions for, sir? You don't pay us. Allow them to live for. <laughs> oh yeah, what's that? What's that? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> I need an example. An example for what, sir? Freeze up. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> That's oh. you in the next five minutes. It's a good thing. It's a good thing that Freeze has no con- concept of time because five minutes is literal days to him. Yes. <laughs> I was going to say, it was also funny. I'm just uh, rewatching some clips of the original series and just the number of things that just fucking get you. Still a great joke to this day is the Wilhelm scream joke. Yo, man, that was actually that was totally it. You did it. <laughs> yeah, it just that fucking moment was just like, no, it's called the Wilhelm scream. <laughs> did you guys hear the different takes of the Wilhelm scream? I got yes. to watch the video. Yeah, that's yeah. that's hilarious. It's so funny. It's so Dude, like I got to watch the clip where it's originally supposed to like be put into, and like it's literally just like they're walking through these waters, and then you see a fucking gator under the water, and it pops up and kills the guy, and then you hear. A, without any of the, uh, like, you know how today Wilhelm Scream seems kind of altered just a little? Yeah. It's, it's that it's without more the alter, so, uh, more natural, so it sounds so weird. Where he gets caught, <laughs> it's, ah! Kind of it doesn't like, sound like it was planted, it was actually just him. Yeah. That, it sounds like it's like actually, it actually, actually just Wilhelm screaming. <laughs> that it just sounded like th- from the, the guy. Wilhelm scream. That's Wilhelm Screaming. That's Wilhelm Screaming! <laughs> what, was the, what was the original scene for? What was that movie f- like for? Like yeah, I have no uh, idea. It looked like one of those just classic like fifties action movies, right. uh, where one of the friends dies to an alligator, mm. and so uh, literally during that uh, during the recording, a uh, man getting eaten by uh, by an alligator. Oh, okay, all right. Uh, let me see. Ah, uh, ah! <laughs> uh, that, that's closer. That's closer. Ow! Ah! Uh, no, no, not not now. He's supposed to be screaming. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, but going back to Cooler, just the um, the whole like every single bit of lines from him and all that kind of stuff, great. And it definitely his. I I just want to go real fast into Cooler's design. I just want to talk about his design real fast. Like his I want to talk about his design because 
it is probably one of the best designed characters in all of Dragon Ball. <laughs> Like his first form, like his his quote unquote first form, which is actually his fourth form, is like a very it, it's very obviously like an older brother look of Frieza. Like I say, like it's a very solid one. But that fifth form that he gets, and if you don't know what I'm talking about when I say fifth form, you just you're an idiot. <laughs> you didn't watch it. <laughs> yeah, didn't Go watch, watch it. it. You didn't watch probably one of the greatest abridged movies that they made. <laughs> Or just because, generally but, one of the coolest forms ever made in anime. Because <laughs> that helmet, they're like full on making him super shred. Like he looks like a shredder in every of the best. Tonight every which- I dine on turtle soup. Monkey soup. Turtle soup. <laughs> what about monkey soup? Oh, is that the reference he's making? Yes. Yeah. The super shredder right before he kills himself essentially. Tonight I dine on turtle soup. And then he collapses a pier on top of himself. Yeah. Because they ran out of money. Based off Super Spo- Shredder. Spoilers for live action Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, 2. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Secret of say, Views. Once again, Super Shredder. Uh, something that whenever people make reference to it in any capacity, is including always, TM- TMNT, is always is better. Is always cooler than what actually happened. <laughs> then cool- uh, doesn't that look awesome? Look how big and menacing he is. He died in less than a minute. Went out like a bitch. <laughs> Seriously, how do you react when when it's like he's he's grown so strong? Yeah, <laughs> dead. Monkey. Oh, monkey. So I guess he's similar to other roided dudes. Yeah, that that's the thing that's he's like similar to Bane. That ca- fucking died. I think it happens way too much and stuff. It's like when someone looks awesome or does something like has like a transformation or something like that. They look awesome, but they don't get to use it. Yeah. it's either an absolute curb stomping of on either side. They just don't want to, like, show it off properly or something. I don't know what it is. Yeah. It's super weird. I think the only I think that's why Super Saiyan stands out is because it's the one of the only ones that actually, like, happen and then it actually, like, stays. Well, it was built up really was, well. Exactly. But, was, but, like, the, uh, the Great Ball, Apes. I was Whenever Dragon they, Ball has a general problem when it comes to transformations of it's always introduced very cool and then goes down. <laughs> or worse, it's... Uh, introduced sucky and then eventually gets a little higher yeah. uh, examples easy ones super saiyan incredible transformation when it first popped up uh, when it popped up for a few other characters it was cool then it went to trunks and goten and you're like they just get it and so then it went oh that's awesome oh, okay <laughs> it was like this is cool now what now super what super saiyan 2 then you get, and it's like Super Saiyan two. Everybody forgets about it. In all fairness, of it's Could, just Super Saiyan one with was, more lightning. With, with lightning, it yeah. was it was overshadowed by I think Super Saiyan three and and four, and then and then with the be fact more that visually interesting. Super Saiyan two yeah. is good when it was with Gohan. Yeah, that is the point when it truly peaked. Of this is the greatest thing ever, and then Goku shows it off. Of here's Super Saiyan two. And it's like, oh, okay, he. He got Super Saiyan 2 at some point? Okay. And now here's Super Saiyan 3. Okay, like... Guess we're moving right past Super Saiyan 2. Okay. And <laughs> Making that whole thing go away. And it's like Super, Super Vegeta Saiyan... didn't matter. Super yeah. Saiyan 3 gets the well, best possible introduction. Of, like, uh, being... Uh, what's his name? Uh, what's the Sean name? Shemmel? Uh, Sean Schemmel. Just oh, that scream yes. he gives as he's transforming. As he passes out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the one that made him pass out. And that scream he gives right before he becomes Super Saiyan 3, and it's the coolest thing ever to look at, then it's gone. And he doesn't really do it again, uh, like, Cause, at all. Because it's it not... It becomes uh, Gotenks transformation, essentially. Yeah, that like, it's visually interesting, but it's not as marketable compared to Super Saiyan... It's Super Saiyan 1's hair and Goku's hair are just normal. It's yeah. not as marketable. I yeah. mean, I mean, Super Saiyan three would have been more usable if it was more usable. <laughs> if Akira Toriyama used it, after, and then you get after that point transformations well, it, because it, it became the joke. About that point was when it became the joke of just like okay, anime transformations. Uh, you get Super Saiyan four, which is very cool. Which is still Super my Saiyan favorite. Super Saiyan four was a great transformation. The way it was set up was perfect. Everything it did in GT was perfect. Yeah. Uh, and then after that. We get the kind of the dark age of transformations of you get Super Saiyan God. Which sounds awesome. And you're like, wow! And which like, was cool. Yeah, that which... was the first one that was actually really fucking cool. Of it. The other thing that kept it being kind of cool throughout all this time, they've rarely used it. 
Like, can you think of times they've used it? It, it, it just, it went away as soon Here as it came first in. first battle. Yeah. And then later on, I believe, at one point during the Tournament of Power, and then Broly. And then Broly. It, it's, even though, which like... Which is when Vegeta uses it, which was awesome. And they, because they immediately undercut it with, they, that's the Super Saiyan 1, and then, but they, now they just use Super Saiyan 2 version Super of Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan. Yeah. It's just it in, yeah, in Super they, Saiyan God is like the new base. Yeah, it's like they Super they Saiyan instantly under, became, undercut it. Super Saiyan Blue became uh, the worst one because it wasn't even introduced well. Yeah, like even in the show, which the, gave it extra time to do everything, they didn't introduce it well. The like, fact that just... the fact that it's the only one that isn't using the proper name that it was given. Everybody calls it Blue. Yeah. Yeah. No one cares about calling it SSGSS because. Why would you? Why There's would you? Tester. They they literally make a joke about it in the anime where Goku bites his fucking tongue trying to say it. <laughs> it's like, you I, know what? We're just going to call it Blue. Blue. I, I remember somebody writing it down as like, similar to with Super Saiyan where uh, some people write it because of, they say like Super Sai- Saiyan or whatever. Saiyan, uh, yeah. uh, So it's SSJ. So it's SSJG, SSJ. That throws me off so many times when someone tries using that acronym, but when they don't actually like outright acknowledge that it's part of Dragon Ball. So I'm trying to figure out what they're talking about. Yeah. But then turns out they're just talking about blue. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And and then and then I'm I'm gonna Ultra rope it I'm gonna rope it right back into what we were talking about with the Super Saiyans and all those different forms. And now the the Frost Demon transformations with Frieza and Cooler. Yeah, Frost Demon transformations. Uh you've got all these different ones for Frieza where uh, like Frieza Go just kept going uh, up of like uh, you get first form and it's like okay this guy kind of weird little, little dude gremlin demon uh, guy go to his second form and it's like okay he's bigger oh god we're fucked third form it's alien. that's alien it's we're about alien. to get sued oh god let's hurry up <laughs> let's out never here. show it again <laughs> well, they we're showed forget once about this in one. Broly and it's hilarious yeah yeah uh, <laughs> they go right past that and it's why it's why every single shot of of Frieza in the third form is always front facing, so you can't see the curved head. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the one li- nice touch I do like about it is uh, like even from front facing, it's still still got those massive uh, like alien horns. Oh yeah, it's got which is awesome. The demon horns. Uh, then there's final form Frieza. Final form Frieza. So, so, we'll just, we'll just call it fourth Frieza. form. We'll call it fourth, fourth form. form Shouldn't that be base form? And it, then... it, it, it became his new base form. It became his new base form. Yeah. Uh, and that one, when it was introduced, was perfect. Because after all these massive transformations, he shrank. And you're just like, wait, that's that should mean you're weaker. That should mean you're weaker. Wait, why Why are you so much stronger? It directly, oh my god. It, it made it scary. It directly you, conflicts the um, conflicts with the other transformations. Yeah, the reason why transformation, transformations aren't good anymore, I would say, is because they're, they're a little overdone. And then... Toriyama used transformations in the in the pre- in previous iterations as like a surprise. Yeah, it was always yeah. it was always like a like a tool that they had under under their like, like sleeve or something. And like, um, and and like with with the whole like Frieza's final four being him being small, that was another expectation subversion because he was just getting bigger and bigger. Yeah, and it's like uh, also with Zarbo. No, words, Toriyama right. can be a good writer. Can be. Can, can be. Can, if can he's be. Getting confused. <laughs> but yeah, and so what. And what the movies did, because the movies aren't done with Akira Toriyama, is that when they brought in his brother, who's supposed to be on par with Frieza, if not stronger, has obviously starts in the same form that we last saw Frieza. So in order to also like confuse Goku and all that kind of stuff, it's like that's a good reveal. But then what does Cooler do? Do he goes to the fifth form that absolutely builds on what has already been established. With the frost demons. He goes to the next form? Does that mean he goes gold? No. And that is Shut why <laughs> I'm about to build... That's why I was building into <laughs> how much I don't like gold and what it will eventually become his next transformation after that. No, like, like not even just like with gold Frieza. Like, just the new transformations in, in Dragon Ball in, nowadays. It's just it's just different colored hair. It's just different colored hair and they're faster and stronger now. And it's like... Cool. And it, instead of oh, maybe really... doing something a bit different, like like choosing God. this transformation means that they would have to sacrifice speed or strength or something like that. It's yeah, like, yeah. There's, there's no, no, there's no sacrifices. sacrifices. Yeah, there's no sacrifices. There's no like red flag, like caveat to like like with like with Kaioken. There was a risk to it. 
He couldn't just use it. He couldn't use Kaioken times 20 every single time. It and feels weird. Oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, they, they, they kind of do this with Ultra Instinct in, in Super 2, where uh, he can't use Ultra Instinct for too long because it takes too much energy. But then that confuses me because Ultra Instinct should be a instinct thing. Yeah, it should just not be, be energy, not be an energy. Yeah, thing. it shouldn't be like an energy-based form where you need energy to like elevate yourself. It's just I, you have Ultra Instinct. You have it. You have that sixth sense or whatever. Yeah. I'll say that I God think it's vision. Not, it's not so much me defending it. It's more me just trying to help give like some sort of explanation. Uh, when it comes to Ultra Instinct, from what I read, it, it by the way it looks, it's the kind of thing. Of, first off, it's not a form; it's technique. Weirdly enough, of like it's not supposed to. Yeah, be a form. that and right. That's the weird thing. So kind of like Kaioken. Kind of like Kaioken. Uh, and so it's like the ultimate version of Kaioken, essentially. And so what it is is it's pushing your muscles to the limit. And so after a while of having your muscles pushed to the limit, you're drained. You're you're fucking done. But that, that's I mean, still just I mean, a weird thing. That's that, that, so weird. That can still be a con. That can still be the weakness of using Ultra Instinct. But it should be like a. It should be like a fucking like how he has trans instant transmission. It should just be like a thing you turn on because it's like oh it's time to, to or maybe maybe it is or like there, it's like that maybe. there is a time limit or something like that like a well established time limit like with the fusion thirty minutes. Thing. I don't know or maybe maybe there shouldn't even be a caveat like there shouldn't be a con to it like it should just be like he has Ultra Instinct. He trained, and now he has Ultra Instinct. Yeah. The angels don't exert themselves when they are dodging everything. They're not, yeah. yeah. Do you hear the theory that the angels are just in a constant state of Ultra Instinct? Which is so weird, because it's like... Because the white hair. Yeah, the white hair, but but I mean, I mean more weird that it's like how much it takes out of Goku, and it's just like, how much more evolved and down the line are the angels? Is Goku going to get to a point where he is actively like if he does become a god of creation or destruction, whatever he, he go, yeah. he's going to be? If that I ever if that ever does happen, would his new rival, quote unquote, new rival, be his angel? Or maybe the god of destruction, or is the, or which would be Vegeta? I still right. feel it should be the kind of thing of like the way they had it in uh, original Dragon Ball all the way up to GT is he was more guardian of the earth. Of, like, he was, like, a almost, like, deity of the Earth itself. Yeah. yeah. Kind of, like, uh, uh, by the end. I will say, when it comes to Super, I don't like the direction of trying to make him a god of destruction. Because, like, they even say themselves, it wouldn't fit Goku. It's it not It wouldn't Goku. fit Goku. It fits Vegeta a little more. Especially okay. what happens towards <laughs> the end of the Cooler movie. With what he does with the bird. Very yeah. much shows why he would be of creation and not of destruction. Yeah. But that that also doesn't make sense because Goku shouldn't have those abilities. And like it's it's really annoying when, for like Western audiences, they turn Goku and like a, into like a Jesus figure. Or so, now reading your mind. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like okay, you're just gonna have some Jedi mind trick on me, whatever. Okay. Whatever. Yeah, no. When it comes, are to... you gonna use it again? No. Cool. But it's... It, so it's like Frieza should have had a fifth form esque sort of thing and not gone gold like i like the the idea of gold and like obviously someone who thinks himself as like a ruler emperor kind of guy obviously is gonna have a king midas sort of want and desire right but i still think that it should have been he he could have been more adorned with gold instead of like the whole yeah stick being gold or or even at the very least like have some sort of like addition to him instead of being his usual slender self i know that frieza kind of goes for more slender like he then because he doesn't like his second and third forms he prefers the smaller he prefers the more slender designs yeah his slender build because that's his original like size yeah that, that's what he prefers so it makes sense why he wouldn't go for those but i still think that he would definitely prefer something extra like like he always like he, he like you just showed me a clip of the first time we see golden frieza and he says a halo hmm it would have been better if it was a crown oh i see what you're talking about like it's Make like it a crown or something like that like something have you seen a uh Black Freeze uh, colorized? I've not. See, like, that's, like, the right direction, but it's, like, the issue is more of, like... Like, that That just looks like a base form. Like, another new base form. Like Exactly. That's the issue, is that, like, when he's slender like that, that's what you... is When it's the least amount to draw, that's a base form. Yeah. When you yeah. have to draw the least, that is a base form. That's what I consider it as. And that's why I say, like... Like, that color scheme on, like, Cooler would look awesome. Okay. Right. That color scheme on Cooler would look awesome. This brings up a point for me of uh, just uh, curiosity. I feel Dragon Ball is, while it's kind of like, 
in all fairness, the father of uh, anime transformations. Yeah, and now like, it's kind of... That's the least we can give it credit for of it's basically the starter of big anime transformations. The Great Ape and the Super Saiyan. Yeah. Like, mind you, some of the... It was basic, but at the same time, it was mind-blowing what they did with transformations back in Dragon, uh, Dragon Ball. Nowadays, you've got Attack on Titan fa- uh, being, uh, like, the Attack Titan. Yeah. Uh, you've got that transformation. you got Bleach, where it's, like, the Hollow Mask, followed by, Aron like, uh, Vassalore, followed by um, uh, Final Getsuka Tensho. All right. kinds of transformations like that. Yeah. Uh Ble- uh, one piece with the uh the gears one piece with all the gears uh and then you got naruto where like uh you're not there yet but obviously plenty of transformations there there's yeah there's there's lots of transformations in, in yeah naruto. i kind of i kind of and like also. elevated states the the, the, the the one i know right now the sexy jitsu <laughs> yeah that was that was pretty funny yeah. but like but like i, I what really do you think is the best show to have done it though the best show to have done transformations yeah I think I think Bleach did it. You the think best. Bleach did it? I think I think Bleach did it in in the way that I wanted transformations to work. Like the final gets a good Tensho is like what I feel like Super Saiyan three should have been with Dragon Fist. Yeah, it's, it's him using everything. Not sacrifice. He didn't have to sacrifice like but his, using his powers. Everything. But like he Super Saiyan three is used only for the Dragon Fist. Yeah, to maximize the Dragon Fist or to like a Kamehameha or something. You know. It, no, I, I still th- yeah. What you were saying the uh, the Dragon Fist being Super Saiyan three. It's like when you see Super Saiyan three, you know the Dragon Fist is popping up. Yeah, you know and then it. and then I think in in Dragon Ball GT, it's not canon, and like it doesn't really matter to like the context of our like what we're talking about but like it still I, works he he uses it he used dragon fist in super saiyan 4 too and like super saiyan 4 was it had it had a weakness it had a con to it and it wasn't like some asshole weakness it, or con it, it was, was it was he couldn't control his his like anger it, it drew it, it back it, it, Ozuru, yeah. yeah it drew it drew it back to the great ape yeah i I will say, I will add to that of um personally the show that I feel has also done it great is uh one piece Right. I'll say, like, the gears in One Piece, fucking great. Like, uh, the way they've set it up of, uh, like, it requires training to, no, uh, like, uh, turn down the bad effects. Of, right. Like, how Gear 2, the entire thing about it was it was taking years off his life. Yeah. And the only thing that stopped it was actual training. And then you get Gear 3, where that fully drains him yeah and like it turns him into to, mini luffy <laughs> he's able yeah. to do it uh, uh post time skip he's able to do it better but still it uh at least drains him enough like uh do it more commonly but at the same time be like okay need a second okay let's go yeah but like you notice like there's there's like he's trained to there's repercussions it. though you know yeah. there's repercussions and like there's the Dragon Ball like has repercussions, but the repercussions are oh it takes too much out of me and oh I'm tired and it's like and it's like yeah that's exactly what what happens with with Luffy and stuff like that but there's more to it there's it makes it more, it's explained it's elaborated yeah. on a little bit more specifically like j- like Gear Two drains Luffy because he's like pumping, pumping. his blood yeah and his heart it's yeah. pumping his heart so fucking much that that's what it, that's what's giving him the strength and that's also what's killing him and then Gear Three is super rough because he has to giganticize his body and then he's like he's essentially blowing up his muscles right in that moment right and then the there, he, he only gets one use of it yeah he, he gets the one use of it and then he's done yeah and then, but and that's the thing too with um dragon ball is that like it still it still also brings it it rings back around to the issue of that there's no stakes that if you die oh we'll just wish you back yeah yeah it'll it also helps of um like uh, obviously you've heard about it so like uh, uh, gear 4 which you see later on down oh, the line yeah, I've seen that's that. an example of like design wise when it comes to transformations i love yeah of like compared to the super saiyan uh, uh gold uh, yeah, uh, gold blue red uh purple all this shit of just like it's just a hair swap compared yeah. to gear 4 where it's like okay what happens his muscles expand in the same way as gear 3 and he's covered in black and all this different shit. Looks fucking wild. Yeah. And I, th- that just reminded me, too. It's like, there's a reason why, especially in Dragon Ball Z, Boo, and GT era that we grew up in, that's why whenever you looked up Super Saiyan 100 and you see it, 
it, like whatever the p- drawing that someone made with like Super the mass Saiyan amount of 100, hair. Super Saiyan where it was the giant wall of hair with him in the middle with black eyes and like a Majin symbol. And like you, they, and they, everybody... they change him. They yeah, change and every him. and when you see that, you go whoa because it's like why what like you try and think of what could happen there and all that kind of and stuff. Then, and then they just one of the main reasons I like uh, it's one of the main reasons I like Beast Gohan. Yeah, it, I it's, know it's a bit it's, of an ass. It, it's a good. It's I a like good. It because you could tell that it's, it's a good direction. Like. Yeah, it's a good direction. It, it's actually opinion. it's actually visually different compared to what has been given to us recently. Mm-hmm. It's it's not Super Saiyan reskinned. Right, right. I watched a I watched a video last night about Goku's character development, and it went all the way back to like Dragon Ball with how like, uh, when when Krillin died, it very much changes Goku a little bit. Yeah, he, he goes from being like his happy happy wistfulness to being dead serious and I'm going to kill him. Right? Like this, like, con- like this loss there's, of There's the flip. the flip. Right. And then he also, he also kind of forsakes um, Roshi's training by throwing out the hard work by going to Korin's tower to get the super juice or whatever the fuck it's called. Oh, yeah. E- even he- even though it turned out to be like false or whatever. But yeah, yeah. It, like, it was real. still a shortcut he was willing to take. Yeah, it was it was a shortcut he was... Like, it was a jump that he wanted to take because he knew he wasn't strong enough and he needed to be stronger to to do this. And he wanted to do it the easy way instead of the training harder way. and Because like he wanted immediate results because he wasn't willing to have the patience to... like he Because he was so... He was so con- he was so like upset about Krillin's passing. Do you think the transformations might actually be more, like it could in universe be explained as a non way of the characters being able to process the transformation? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like that's like, actually an idea that a lot of uh, people have had with different anime. Of that's an idea that happens all the time in anime. Of is it more a are they interpretation to... of the character, like? It, in all fairness, that happens with, like, Demon Slayer and One Piece again, because, like, uh, One Piece being an example, you've seen the black stuff on uh, Gear 4 in the yeah, future. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's hockey. That's hockey, In actuality, yeah. it would be just, uh, like... Just really big, build... Big Luffy. Hulk it, Loki. <laughs> it, would be, it would look a lot more like Gear 3, in all fairness, but, like, more condensed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, compared to Demon Slayer, where it is said before that uh, the special effects... In Demon Slayer, what they do is basically, um, it is mentioned that all those special effects that they have aren't actually in world. Yeah, like, like, the, like when f- they... the fire shooting out is not actually the case. It's just that's how uh, it's presented for extra flair. Yeah, for the yeah. audience. That I I would actually like to see Demon Slayer without all of that. I would actually like to see that. Yeah, and like you get a shot where it's it's like a it's a open more open or like long shot and you get to see them move yeah. in, the, in the setting that they're in yeah i think it would honestly i think the only problem with uh making it so that it's more the sword skills and less the special effects i think the only problem that would end up happening is it essentially changes the entire genre of it because it goes from the classic shonen uh, type to it would be more realistic realistic gruesome yeah of like, you, you, know you would see I mean? a lot like, it'd more. It'd be a darker tone. Right. I think that I think it the would light, still uh, like fire uh, makes it feel a lot more shown and a lot more like. It allows them to get watch a- this. It allows them to get away with it a bit more. Yeah. I wish Vagabond had its anime, man. <laughs> all all the problems that I have with everything in in so many like stories nowadays that get animated, all of Vagabond those problems, all those problems just aren't existent in in like Vagabond or Berserk. Like it's it's a realistic like I have to. I have to have mental fortitude in order to fight this person. I don't need another form to make me stronger and faster. It's building yourself up mentally more than physically. Right, right. And it's like, it's more about the soul than it is the the fight itself, you know? Yeah. It's about it's about the characters, like, it, communicating each other through the fight. And, like... And learning about each other and trying to beat each other and come out on yeah, top. Yeah, yeah. And, like, there's there was, like, this mini arc in, in Vagabond where it kind of, like, it... It like there, there's there's lots of like time skips throughout Vagabond, um, okay. and like we meet one of the characters who we are we we see a new uh, an old character who we met before, but he like is different. He has a beard now, he has longer hair, and uh, his hair is like parted to the side, and he looks kind of emo. But it's revealed that that's there because he has a new scar on his face, and then after the fight with that character, he he like tells the main character about the person who gave him the scar. And he's like, the man's name was blah, blah, blah. And then it's like a, it cuts away to a whole different character's backstory. <laughs> and like this whole new character, like this new narrative over this character um, and his relationship with fighting 
and the people he fights. And like, oh, it's so good. I, I, can't, I can't fucking, I can't bring it into words because it, it's just, it's just put it's funny. so well. It's funny how you're like, uh, like you really want me to finish Berserk, not just so I, uh, not just because so I can finish, say that I've finished Berserk, but also so I can start reading Vagabond. I mean, yeah. I, just, I, just, I, I got a quick question of, is it, is it going to be like to finish up uh, like that trio that I've seen online? Is it you're going to finish Vagabond and then you're going to go read Vinland Saga? Probably. <laughs> I don't know. It, it, they're just so good. They're so yeah. good. Look, like the, and then it's like the the thing about Vagabond too. I should say I'm, I'm gonna finish up with this before and then go, get back to. And we'll we'll, we'll we'll get into. Then we'll the story. talk about the story cooler. Yeah. Like the thing with mangas and like having such good detail. I feel like that, like having good art, really really elevates the, the like. Fuck, how do I explain the storytelling the, per- the, the, the story to- like like it absorbs you it, it just absorbs you into the into the story and like you're completely you care you're completely sucked into it and you're like you just you just sucked into it like a good story will suck you into it and like you won't be asking questions that are like that like frustrate you and take you away from the story you won't be like you won't get stuck thinking about why is this like this instead of this you're just right. ready for the next thing that you're about to read. Right, right. You're just watching the story. You're just seeing what's happening. You're just like, because you're like, what the fuck is going to happen next? How is this going to unfold? Like, and like, it's, cause, and like the, the, the thing that I want to like link this to a Dragon Ball, it's like with, with Gohan. Oh, right? yeah. With Gohan. A lot of people don't like that he just kind of becomes a, a pacifist. And like, it makes sense for his character. And I think if done properly, it would be. It it could have been it would make more sense and I think more people would feel it would doesn't feel like yeah. it, would, it, would be, it would be more validated I feel like if it was I don't know done a little bit better because because they with with, with the Cell Saga to the Buu Saga the reason why people wanted or wanted more from Gohan was because like Goku he was set up to have more he was set up for it it yeah. was being set up that Gohan was going to be the new the Go- new protector of Earth. And he is like, and he's like the the strongest person now. He surpassed Goku. He surpassed his father right then and there. Yeah, he in sur- defeating Cell, he absolutely surpassed Goku in terms of like strength. Ooh, yeah. I'm glad you mentioned this because mentioning Vagabond, mentioning Berserk, and then mentioning Gohan's quest for peace, essentially, you've just reminded me that uh, basically a, some slight spoiler of um uh, uh Vinland Saga. That's basically the setup of Vinland Saga itself, of child warrior, whole thing there, uh, grows up his entire life of just fighting, basically, all yeah. this time. And by the end of season one, uh, tries to abandon it all. If the reason why it's mentioned, season two of uh, Vinland Saga, basically the rest of Vinland Saga, doesn't have nearly as many fights as uh, season one did. And the reason why is because he's going to try to be a pacifist and so and people are basically like upset anytime about it. somebody fucks with Thorfinn anytime somebody fucks with him the fans reaction is god leave the poor dude alone yeah yeah and so like that's basically the gohan situation done right, right. where it's like when <clears throat> when the hero kid the kid of the hero surpasses his father it def but but wants to be a pacifist but it, it should be more of like he shouldn't be so much a pacifist, more of just like wanting peace and staying in peace. That like right. any time a warrior, way, a warrior in the garden. Yeah, exactly. He should have been the warrior in the garden, even though that like he was being set up, like he was very obviously being set up as the gardener in war. Right. The way it was set up, essentially, uh, from the looks of it, of Vinland Saga was, uh, it's just looked at as like, okay, he's got his reasons to stop. He's yeah. got his very specific reasons. To not want to be anywhere near a war war zone ever again. Yeah, yeah. And like th- even halfway through the show, like you and uh, like uh, Mayhem and I, we've been watching that. Halfway through season one, we're already like, Jesus Christ, kid, get out of there, get out. <laughs> yeah, and and Thorfinn kind of went through like his emo phase, and Gohan never went through an emo phase. He should have. Like he kind of does when he's fighting Cell. Like he's kind of like, in like the ten seconds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Th- that's going from Super Saiyan one to Super. Sa- uh, no, it's the entirety of Super Saiyan two. Yeah, yeah. The entirety of Super Up Saiyan two is, is is his little emo moment, and then he yeah, and then like and then Goku dies, and then he has to sacrifice his arm for Vegeta, and everything. Yeah. Oh. But but it's just it's just another case of Gohan. And then and then, and then they they set up Gohan, and then they threw him out the window because people wanted Goku. And it's and like Toriyama didn't know how to include Goku into the story with without making Gohan. 
or without throwing keeping, out Gohan. Yeah, without throwing out Gohan. Which it's like, it's like I almost like I know that like the since how big Dragon Ball was, especially right after the Cell uh, Boo Saga, is Cell and uh, like after the Cell during the Boo Saga, how big Dragon Ball Z was, and just kind of how hard it would have been on Toriyama to be like deciding which like he couldn't figure it out, and also I can't figure this out. That would kind of ruin all of this. So he kind of just rebounded back onto it. And it is just like he should have taken a break, like completely stopped before going ahead. Yeah. Like, I don't know if that actually happened or anything like that, but whatever amount of time he had to go from Cell to Boo, he should have had more time. Yeah, I feel like whenever Toriyama forgets things or like cer- there's like certain weird It's because he's choices. being like pushed. I feel like, I feel like those are results of his burnout. Yeah. Like whenever he gets burnt out, that's usually, I don't, we don't know. We can't really say for sure, but like if it, it makes feels sense like when you, when we, when we like look at it and you observe it is like, maybe that's why even, he, even like, Oda is forced to take breaks every so often of just like, okay, you're doing good. You're doing good. Take a goddamn break, man. Stop. But Oda's Stop. different. Oda's different. Stop. Oda's different because he has everything planned out already. Yeah. He already has everything planned out and how he wants it to go and it's yeah. already good. So, like, he can... He has a storybook. He can both afford to overwork himself and to, and to like, take breaks. It's, like, fine. But Toriyama did everything, like, in the moment. Oh, in the, mo- yeah, in the moment. Yeah, that's what it is. Oda, he had a plan of, like, beginning, middle, end. And then, uh, throughout it, it's basically like, okay, I have some more fun ideas. Let's add them. More fun ideas. Let's add them. And so it's basically extended but in a natural form his path his his goal it's like meanwhile um, dragon ball was i have a way to start it i'm done what do you think you editor? more what do you think editor you don't like this okay you how want about more this? okay here's more it's like um more? here's the, more the best way to expand on oda's like way Stop of doing ordering is ordering steaks it's like yeah it's like it's like when it's like a lasagna with with oda it's like here's like the way that you do it it doesn't matter how big the there's lasagna the top gets. layer there's the bottom layer and there's the middle layer. and then you just fill it oh, in whatever fillings you want you just fill it in yeah that's it but toriyama is like literally it's just like all right the I next made the next, bottom ne- layer. next you want next, some more next. i'm not I'm, I'm trying to i'm not i'm not trying to say toriyama is also like a lasagna i'm trying to say a different type of food <laughs> no, he's Tor- no he is uh, uh torizania and here you are trying to fuck up my my analogy fuck he you torizania fuck you anyways torizania it's like meatballs yeah but it's just like let's just have another meatball another meatball another meatball another meatball another meatball yeah I do think Toriyama is a really good writer, obviously, because we have the stories we have now. Here we are still still talking about it. Yeah, like 40 years later. (laughs) Um, If he was a bad bad writer, no one would remember Dragon Ball. We're we're in 2023 right now. The 80s were 40 years ago, wasn't it? Well, 20 and then 20. Yeah, yeah. The (laughs) people who were born in the late 80s are becoming 40. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) But... But yeah, like, like could you could you imagine if if the story went along in the path of Trunks' timeline, the original timeline of Dragon Ball? That would link together a lot better. Cause then, and then like you filled in like between the gaps. Then you could have Gohan have his emo phase. You can have Gohan have his "I'm gonna learn and become better" phase. And oh then, my God! You just you just made me yeah, really want story. to write that. Enti- I want to write that now. An <laughs> entire arc of Gohan after everybody's died. Basically connecting the end of Cell to the future, if to the history of Trunks. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, that sounds that too so good. good. That sounds too. It would good. have been so good. Like it, it could, it could have even been. You know what? It, it even could have been like the entire Cell saga could have been exactly as is. But the, it, but it's still the events could have played out exactly the same and ended up in the same position as history of Trunks with Boo instead of the androids. Right. Oh, uh, uh, I. I know it'll uh, probably make you guys a little sad, but apparently Kakarot DLC does handle like a little further what actually happened with the whole Boo thing. Mm. Uh, what do you mean? Like... Uh, so in Super, they actually talked about it of Trunks. Handled oh, Boo. in Trunks' timeline. Okay, okay. Uh, that... Trunks handled Boo. Yeah. Uh, what... Yeah, the, yeah. Trunks just by himself just ha- was able to take care of Boo. Yeah, he, he, he learned. Kakarot... He learned Super Saiyan two, and then he killed Dabura and he killed Boo. Yeah, in Kakarot, they actually explain it a little further of what happens is um, uh, it's, well, he only got one guardian left on Earth, right? You only got one strong person just left on Earth. It's just Trunks. And so Supreme Kai comes down to Earth, goes to him, and it's like, okay, you're basically our last option. I'm going to train you. We're going to go in, and we're going to handle Boo, okay? We're going to yeah. handle Bobbity. We're going to handle uh, Deborah. Uh, and so he goes in, he trains, and it's like... Uh, 
it's like his second Gohan. Like, Supreme Kai becomes like his second Gohan of another father figure, essentially. Second Piccolo. Yeah, and uh, during the fight with uh, Deborah and all them, uh, both of them die. Like, uh, uh, Supreme Kai, as well as his assistant, they die. Yeah. Like, they get killed by uh, uh, Dabro and them. And so, because that goes Super Saiyan 2, wipes them out. Yeah, and, and so it's like... That that kind of works, but I still think that like a alternate like what if like what would would have we would have done differently for the Boo Saga? It probably would have been that, but but most likely everybody would have survived instead of everybody dying or whatever. But it's just like it's more of like leading into that and like yeah, Gohan per- being being severely affected by his father's death. He, right, he's his like like son. what should happen because that that's what happens Trunks. when you're fucking twelve and your dad dies again Trunks. again. <laughs> Uh, Trunks, he is his father's son, except for the part of going off and becoming Majin Vegeta. Is it like in, like Majin Vegeta actually could have worked in a Goku's gone now? What the fuck can I do? Yeah, and it's and, Gohan but, versus and it's Majin Gohan, Vegeta. and it's Gohan versus him, and it's and Gohan it kinda... doesn't know Super Saiyan three, and so his fight versus Majin Vegeta is legit. Yeah, it's like an actual like he should have lost. It it actually like thinking about it now and like actually like There's putting a lot of together the events with Boo because it's like Boo is the one I know the least. Like it's the one I haven't right. really watched at all. And it's like it's like the it's the it's, it's the, the weird one. It's the Boo saga is the saga I think people love the most about Dragon Ball because it has some of the most like character development for some of the characters. Yeah, for because Goku isn't there for most of it. Goku, Goku, I mean, he's still there. But yeah, like, I, say, uh, I, like I, I still remember crying over uh, Majin Vegeta's like the final stand. It's like it's yeah. good, but like it's just thinking about how it's like they could have led it led it in with Gohan instead and the yeah. fact that Vegeta's Even quote unquote fi- with that Vegeta's quote unquote final fight. <laughs> was actually not with Goku and how much that actually tears him up. Yeah. Oh, that could have been the, so good. The Boo Saga has some of the best moments in Dragon Ball and like in anime history, but it, those those moments aren't built up in like a healthy way, or not a healthy way, but like in a... In a better in, way. In a proper way, you yeah. know, in a way that I think Toriyama probably... Well, actually, no, he had full control. He, like, he would have gotten there if he just had more time. Maybe, and like, I don't know, it could have used so much more polish. And it could also have been like another thing with with Gohan being affected by having to kill Vegeta, and there's trunks and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Like that could have, oh! And then Goten maybe could be there or not be there. I, I think I, no, Goten could, could still be there because yeah, Goku yeah, comes yeah. back. Yeah, Goku, Goku's I'm back. Noticing, in the Cell Saga. By the way, I'm noticing that our uh, series of reviewing these uh, TFS movies have become basically us saying, "Dragon Ball, why aren't you doing this cool stuff that is so easy to because, do?" Because abridged shows, uh, like the people, Team Four Star that work on abridged show that you can give a shit about Dragon Ball and it can be good. When you make it and give a shit, it could be probably one of the best things ever. That is why, even though Yu-Gi-Oh! Abridged or whatever is like the first abridged series that like people consider good, but then it instantly got overshadowed by Dragon Ball Z Abridged. Instantly got taken over because Dragon Ball Z is just that good and that big that anybody doing it justice, doing the things that the fans have been wanting from the franchise, doing exactly what they wanted and also doing, like, the best jokes and all that kind of stuff, the references and all that kind having of stuff. Having humor and having their own intelligent, like... Y- like, smart... Making it their own. Yeah, very coherently putting together their own headcanon, too. Yeah, yeah. Because... And, like, they, they also follow on their, like, previously set up, like... Uh, Pre- pre-des- predestined outcome... Previously set up ideas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, they, they, they'll... They'll they'll stick with the continuity. They're really good with continuity, and I feel like that's another really big problem with Dragon Ball is continuity is really hard to to keep together because it's so easy to forget about so many characters, and like a lot of characters are forgotten. Who who gives a fuck about Tien? Who gives a fuck about Yamcha? Yeah, why why are they still here? Oh, is it because these characters were considered favorite characters and all that kind of stuff? Okay, I gotta try and keep them in this story. Right. What about, what about this character? Who? Yeah, yeah, and, like, everybody loves Krillin, but it's like, oh, it's Krillin, you know? Like, his story's kind of done. Yeah, his story's kind of done. The last thing he has to do is become the turtle hunter, and then he's done. Yeah, and even then, that probably won't happen. Yeah, it probably won't happen. It won't be exactly like that. He's just going to be a regular police officer. And, yeah. like, and like there's no, there's not really any development for Krillin. He's kind of just the butt of the joke, usually. Or, yeah. like, he's, like, just doing his own thing off screen. And, like, that's, that's fine. I feel like that's fine for, like, world building. But, like, 
it doesn't evolve the characters in a way that people would have wanted the character, like it's a like, character evolution. You, you can't have a cast of characters and then have all the development be off screen. It's really annoying. Yeah. It's really annoying and it's really like, why am I watching this? I now? wanted the scene with Android 18 and Krillin <laughs> conceiving their daughter. <laughs> clang, 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 clang. <laughs> Can you imagine the discussion of just like, uh, oh yeah, what should we name our, our, our girl? Marin. Oh, well, uh, uh, what about Marin? Why Marin? Pick a different name, asshole. <laughs> yeah. oh, Not oh, your ex. Uh, Marin spelled with an I? I'll take it. Fuck it. <laughs> All right. Well, like, that's two the... R's. <laughs> with two with R's? R's. Yeah, you know, that's actually the joke in um, uh, Dragon Ball Super. There's a moment when Seventeen goes up to uh, Marin. And she's like, "Oh, this must be Marin." You see in the subtitles, it says Marin w- with the spelling of that ex-girlfriend, <laughs> and she goes, "It's pronounced Marin." <laughs> and you see Krillin in the back, <laughs> like unresponsive. Just how did you miss? <laughs> Wait, you can see words in the sky too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now let's get into but, the like, story. But like that, that's that's what I hated about about Venom. Because in like the the live action Venom movie, because oh, Venom, yeah. Venom, Venom just kind of gets off screen development. Like he just randomly choose like not it just, it's not random, but it feels random because he just has a change of heart. It's like, the whole movie. Out. The whole movie he's talking about how this race of humans are losers and it's pointless. To you save are them a and loser. And like this planet sucks and everyone sucks and like there's no like he doesn't care about about this planet or these be, people. Uh, and then and then they're I on care. top of a building. And it's like Eddie. <laughs> I care, Eddie. These people, this world, it's beautiful. Like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> Great. Glad, really glad, glad you're on our side now. Yeah. Okay. You know what made me laugh? Uh, the one thing that made me laugh about the second movie, I'll say this, is the fact that like a lot of people were very upset because they made it seem very, very uh, gay. Uh, the whole thing with Venom and Eddie. It's a relationship. There, it's, li- it's an actual relationship. Yeah. Here's the thing. I'm going to say this right now. Apparently the comics do the same thing. Because like, somebody was talking about that online of like, 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 you know, you can't portray the relationship like that. And then shows 50 panels of just... Uh, of, ben, of Eddie just... fucking the city. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No. 13 panels of him fucking the symbiote. I think I think someone someone my, one of my friends from high school was telling me about this. <laughs> someone had like an interview with like the directors or like with the producer I think of of Venom, and they're like, "What happens if Eddie gets a boner?" And they responded with, "Venom handles it." <laughs> Ven- Ven- <laughs> I got you, Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> just understood. <laughs> it's just. Oh no. Eddie. <laughs> Eddie, why is that happening in your pants? Why? It, it happened when you looked at that girl. <laughs> wait, don't worry about wait, it. Don't wait, worry wait, about wait. it. It's Eddie. <laughs> I'm jacking you off now. <laughs> no! Wrong time, Venom! Wrong time! Oh, God. Sitting, what if Eddie, like, what if Eddie gets, like, fear boners? He's, he's sitting there climaxing, like, <laughs> and she's like, are you okay? <laughs> wait, oh, my God. The veins that are on his suit. Ah! The eyes! Ah. Okay, okay, okay. Moving on, moving on. <laughs> okay, last joke that I pray to God you cut out. Eddie, I'm a pocket <laughs> I am your own <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> So anyway, our Use review... Use me as you see fit! <laughs> no! Anyway, our review of Dragon Ball Z, the outstanding strongest versus strongest. The Japanese or the name. the English title that was given by Toei, Dragon Ball Z, the strongest rivals. What? That's what it's called. <laughs> it's the most infuriating thing about the movies. The outstanding strongest versus the strong... Versus strongest. Okay. I mean, it probably makes more sense in Japanese, but whatever. Strong... No, Wait, let me see. It literally says dra- uh, Dragon Ball's. Uh... Don't say it. Dragon <laughs> Baru. <laughs> Toby Kiri no Psycho. Psycho. There's a Japanese viewer who's coming out for me now. Of like getting ready to kill me. You being gay for you? Could be a gay kill. What is that? It's JoJo. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I hate that you said that. It made sense. <laughs> that is still my least favorite thing about JoJo. Is that. Anything you say to describe it <laughs> and it makes sense is the worst because JoJo <laughs> doesn't make sense. So when you say something that makes sense about it, it's bad. It's like you know it's bad. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's so fucking funny. It's just it's a gay kill. What does that mean, JoJo? Damn it! <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> that works. That's literally just Jo. Uh, that's literally just Jotro and Dio. Yeah, it is generational. 
<laughs> hatred boner. Yeah. All right, all right. The story of what is now referred to as Cooler's Revenge. Cooler witnessed the destruction of uh, Planet Vegeta, but did nothing when he saw the little pod that had Goku on it fly away. And so, uh, years later on down the line, finds out his brother was killed by a Saiyan, decides to go to Earth, goes to Earth, uh, starts uh, fighting uh, Goku, instantly fucks him up by shooting a laser at him, and so... Hits him with one set of I-beams, and, like, does more damage than any other character has ever done to Goku. Yeah, Yeah, just kind of puts him him on a commission. Fully clocks him out. It's like a Kaioken right there, like, times 20. (laughs) Just... uh. Goku gets hidden away in a cave by Gohan, and uh, a bunch of the minions for Cooler come in and wipe out the forest in hopes to kill him. Obviously don't. Uh, and meanwhile, during this time, Krillin and... Uh, Krillin? Oolong and uh, dra- uh, uh, Dragon Ball filler movie character uh, go in... <laughs> Icarus. <laughs> Icarus, yes. They go in, and they manage to find him, uh, resuscitate him, uh, or like they uh, get ready to resuscitate him. They tell Gohan to go off and find uh, Senzu Beans from Korin's lookout. And so he goes off, gets the Senzu Beans, heads back, uh, gets intercepted by all the bad guys, at which point Piccolo saves him. Piccolo, help! Uh, <laughs> Piccolo kills two of the three bad guys. Uh, one of them still ends up living. And uh, Gohan manages to get away back to Goku. Meanwhile, Piccolo, during his fight with the last guy, ends up getting his ass handed to him by Cooler. Yeah, one second, one second. I, want, I want to talk about Piccolo as like a character. Uh, yeah. my, my favorite thing about Piccolo in Dragon Ball is that he is reliable. Oh, yeah. He's reliable and he's so, so much more fucking intelligent. And like he... The superhero does it best when it's just like when Goku's not around, Piccolo is just just becomes the the one in charge of earth i love everything to do with the portrayal of piccolo in dragon ball super beyond because he really has just become uh gohan the sun family the sun family babysitter yeah Yeah, he's he's (laughs) gohan's he's gohan's uncle who is so close to him as a father figure that it's just like okay i need a babysitter me when my uncle is only four years older than me (laughs) (laughs) i was gonna say well so any Mexican household anyway. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, go babysit your uncle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what? <Okay>. What? <laughs> my, Meet your new uncle. Still my, my new what? <laughs> I was going to say, still my favorite video of just like me vis- me uh, visiting my uncle. And it's like a little kid compared to the 20-year-olds. Like, uh, oh, hola, tío. Hola, chico. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and by the end of the video, it's just like, okay, I'm about to head out. Where are your bitches? <laughs> Oi, Tio, Tio, you can't do that. That's bad. But Chico... (laughs) (laughs) Pero yo quiero. (laughs) I don't know why, but the little kid, like... Talking in Spanish. Yeah, talking in Spanish. It's like one of my favorite, like... It's just like, when you hear them say anything, I have to do everything possible to not laugh. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Because it it, it just sounds like angry chopper. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Yes. But... Uh, oh my no, god, I, I gotta hear the Spanish dub voice for Chopper now. Oh, we gotta find that. Anyways. <laughs> but, like, but like in the fight Bullshit! with... In the fight with Cooler's squad, Piccolo, like, tricks them all. He tricks them all, and, like, he, he does a surprise attack on one of them. He wasn't aiming for you, bitch! Yeah, he wasn't... He's very... Oh my god. And, Piccolo, like, he just, Piccolo he just, is just so good in movies. He just handles them. He fucking handles it, bro. He he's competent. Fucking... He's so competent in the movies. I know. Like, the movies like, themselves he, just competent. make people like... Piccolo. Yeah, yeah, he's competent in the animes too. I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah, like, yeah. but it's still just like the, it, it doesn't even come close in the movies. And it's like the fact that it's like in the abridged version that when he's fighting him, he extends his arms, and it's just like, I, 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 I didn't even know we could do that. Yeah, I forget about them all all the time. Also, <laughs> yeah, it's literally a movie only technique, right? Oh my god! Wait, no. Wait! Oh, oh my, my god. god! Did you find it? I found it. Turn it up. Put it in the mic. You need to hear this. Wait for it. <laughs> Nami Usopp. Nami Usopp. Nami Usopp. Nami Usopp. Just a, <laughs> I love Chopper so much. Just... 
Where's the chopper? <laughs> I love it. Okay, just... okay, okay, okay. <laughs> but that was amazing. Spanish, Spanish dubs can be fucking hilarious and also somehow great sometimes. Like, uh, there's the Spanish dub of Chainsaw Man. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, <shared laughs> that. I love that clip so much of Spanish Chainsaw Man. Of just, just, uh, uh Denji just like, okay, we're gonna go out and get that cat. Oh! It's like, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God! <laughs> power! Power! <laughs> power! <laughs> power! 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 Edge! <laughs> You gotta know, it's like every time you think about power, it's just like she's got a reek. Yeah, either of blood or both. Of, yeah, Ooh. both. Would you still though, Mayhem? After get in the tub. Yeah. <laughs> after, after thorough bathing. <laughs> okay, got it. So, uh, Mayhem, the, uh, the, the but with my eyes clawed out, yes. <laughs> I was gonna say Mayhem, the individual. No, Mayhem, the per- uh, the character you created. Yes, absolutely, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. But yeah, just, nothing could stop him. So Our sword needs its blood. No! <laughs> <laughs> we take not the lower bloody path, but the but the hidden dirty road. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get. Uh, okay, Piccolo gets messed up by Cooler. Uh, whole thing happens. Of um, uh, Gohan gets back to the cave. Uh, is about to give the Senzu bean to uh, Goku. At which point. Krillin, uh, uh, basically the bag gets shot by uh, the last bad guy. Salazar. Yeah, the Frenchman. Uh, uh-huh. He shoots it, destroys the bag, and so Krillin is like, that was our last hope! It goes to fight him, gets his ass handed, and he's like, oh, well, good thing I had distraction. He hands him the, uh, the bean that was in his pants. Here you go. It's still my favorite thing whenever we just hear Krillin get his ass handed to him in the background. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not run! <laughs> and so uh hands him the bean uh he goes off and um uh what was it uh french man uh, heads back to the cave notices power level rising his e- thing explodes and then goku pops out all like, trying to be menacing <laughs> <laughs> and he's like it, he's getting ready to fight him uh he goes to fight goku unable to do shit to him and he's like uh uh, uh was asking about friends or family at which point, Cooler shows Does off. Does this Piccolo. count as friends or family? I'm going to consider friends. Considering. He's a Namekian. It's because he's green, isn't it? No, it's because he's a Yoshi. That too. Uh, and uh, so he's like, oh, you bring him back here. And uh, he's like, oh, I'd be careful if I was you. He came down with a terrible case of explosion. Terrible cl- case Throws of explosion. Throws him, explodes Piccolo, and thus begins the fight with Cooler and Goku. Yep. Where, at first, it seems like, oh, this is pretty even. Like, this is pretty interesting. This is pretty even. It, it's like, it's very much like a regular, like, it, it would feel more like a spar. It felt more like a sparring match between the two. Until Form 5. Yep. Form 5 pops out for Cooler. And the moment it pops out, he just goes off and starts obliterating Goku. Like, he's messing him up so bad <laughs> to the point that he's on the floor, like, uh, probably near his limit. And. Everything's uh, gonna be like oh, okay, okay. He's fucked until he picks up a bird, revives it, and then sorry, goes Super Saiyan. no. <laughs> picks up a bird, revives it, and goes Super Saiyan. And so it's like okay. And so uh, now that he's Super Saiyan, he starts beating the shit out of Cooler, and Cooler goes for like okay, fine. I'm gonna uh, do Final Blast. He throws the ball that uh, Frieza threw. Isn't it called Supernova? I like... think so. Uh, he throws the ball. Goku catches it, throws it back. Did my brother do this? Yes, but his was smaller. But yeah, he sends down the supernova, but right before he does, he asks Goku, Did my brother do this? Yes, but his was smaller. Ha! Knew it! And it's just... Uh, that that in- interaction right there just has been going over the entire course of their fight. Just showing how much cooler... I'm totally not like my brother! I'm not like my brother! I'm not like my brother! No, oh, I'm like my brother! <laughs> no! yeah, to be transparent, I'm also just trying to rush through the main plot so that we can talk about stuff that we like. All the jokes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because uh, Goku throws it back and... Blasts him in the... <laughs> f- <laughs> Goku, throw it back! The Goku in question. <laughs> It's the Fortnite torch, dances. Torch the death ball back at him. <laughs> like that one in all fairness, video with the guy the is basketball. It, in all fairness, it's one thing for a man to throw the sun at you with his bare hands. It's another 
for him to shake his ass at you and throw it back. The clap of his ass cheeks. <laughs> the clap of his ass cheeks threw the sun back at you. Hey, I heard the clap of your ass cheeks is pretty strong. Let me fight it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he th- it throws the um, the massive spear back at, go- at Cooler, and it throws Cooler all the way to the sun and destroys him. Uh, and he's fully dead. He will never appear again. He will never appear uh, again. And finally, I all guess that I'm is just cool. Happy ending moment of like, yeah, they're all dead. We're all good. French man is still alive. What are we gonna do? Uh, uh, drill beam into his chest. He's dead. Yeah. What are you I have had. I have had enough of these French <laughs> aliens. Of these space Frenchmen on my Earth planet. <laughs> the space Europeans. I'm done with space Europeans. The space. The space non-Americans <laughs> or Japanese. Yeah. So, I well, one thing I can mention is, uh, do you want to see what the playlist is for the original movie? The original movie. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the, at least the bands uh, in the movie are Drowning Pool, Dust for Life, American Pearl, oh. Breaking Point, Finger Eleven, uh, and Disturbed, as well as Deftones. Hell yeah! Now, n- now say all the song names. Okay. Uh, so the songs are Reminded by Drowning Pool, Poison, Dust for Life, Seven Years, American P- uh, Pearl, Under, Breaking Point, Stay and Drown, Finger Eleven, Falling Down, Breaking Point, Mute, Drowning Pool, Told You So, Drowning Pool, Revelation, American Pearl, Phoenix by Breaking Point, The Game, Disturbed, the game. and Change in the House of Flies by Deftones. Wait, what, what, The Game? Yeah, The Game, Disturbed. I'm going to look that up now. Cause, uh, <laughs> wow! One of the only songs I haven't listened to by them. Save for the lady. <laughs> it's now, now I'm just going to call it the cooler song in my brain now. <laughs> That's how it's going to be categorized. And it's over now. <laughs> oh my god, actually hearing that for a few seconds, that would actually be a good f- replacement sound for the intro. Uh, no. <laughs> but but no, yeah, but no. no. But, no. <laughs> but like that that's kind of like my idea for like if we were to do a new intro. Yeah. No, I, I would love to get like a custom intro done. Oh yeah. yeah. But uh anyway. Uh Jinsu, Jinsu. So why are you Jinsu, you're looking at cowboys again. Now that I'm done with the <laughs> actual story of what's supposed to happen in the sh- in the movie, what now, did you guys th- what do you guys think of this movie itself? It's so raditz. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's so raditz. Just alien just comes down with a backstory, like a really big backstory, but then just fights Goku and loses. No, it's Frieza Saga, Space Europeans. That too. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, wait a minute. Think about the enemies. You've got the weird alien looking guy who uh, like shows up. And it's like a lizard beaker. You know, almost like a uh, Kui. And then afterward, uh, a Kui. Uh, and then afterwards you oh, get huge a Zarbon. Brute. You get a Zarbon in the form of the uh, essentially Cockney accented one, of like more humanoid but still buff. You would equate him with Zarbon and not Dodoria. Uh, uh, well, Dodoria is still kind of back there with the Kui of like weird alien looking, like not human esque yet. Really. Compared to the other guy who he's just a different colored human with like the big Salazar. Old hair yeah, Salazar. Salazar. Or Salza. Is, Salza. Salza. Yeah, Salza. He's closer to a Zarbon of human looking, but just palette swapped. Yeah. And then yeah. afterwards, you get the Space European, which is just uh, like um, uh, Ginyu's people. Oh, you're talking to. Okay. Like, I thought you were. Them lo- being, okay. Like different like, Levels stages of the uh, Frieza saga. Of the Frieza saga, yeah. And then obviously, final enemy, Frieza. Frieza, yeah. Okay. Isn't that kind you, of you, you said that in a very weird way, so I was, <laughs> I was, trying, to, I was trying to understand it. I didn't know Tetris added a different type of block. <laughs> you know what shape I'm talking about. The twin tower shape? No, the, no, the plane shape. I'll be glad when you cut this, but just the whole uh, Overwatch uh, meme one of you guys sent earlier. Today. Oh, yeah. Of just like if over if the Overwatch devs had planned, <laughs> it just didn't happen. happen. You, know the, worst, you, know the worst, you know the worst part? I was half expecting by the end of it that suddenly you go to an animation of the towers. Uh, I mean, yeah, getting fucking railed by something. Oh, it's like it's like Pixar, <laughs> Pixar levels of animation. Pixar levels of animation. Two thousand sixteen and seventeen were fucked up. <laughs> yeah. 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 That that's what that's what I'm gonna cut back to you saying that just with no context. <laughs> but man, 
when, when it came to this movie, the original version, once again, is, like, it's really fucking cool. Like, it's this whole thing. What the fuck is on my leg? It's just spider. There's a spider calling up on your leg right now. Anybody who anybody who's listening to this audio right now, including future me editing this, there is now a spider calling up your leg, going up. You're gonna be so mad at yourself if you actually do look down and see a spider. The spiders are in your walls. I'm in your walls. I'm in your walls. I'm in your walls. I'm in your walls. The spiders coming out of your skin. Halfway through walls. Anytime you see a spider, it's actually me. You have ants coming out of your skin. You have bugs coming out of your skin. You have Anne Hathaway in your skin. You have Anne Hathaway in your skin. Now you have Anne Frank in your skin. You have Anne Frank. You have Helen Keller in your skin. <laughs> now you the have Helen Keller in your skin. She's going. Whoa! Now the sleeper cell that portion of the video is, is over. So fucking funny. <laughs> my family guy clip is so good. Now, now that the sleeper cell portion of the video is over. <laughs> but anyway, I was gonna say when it comes to this movie, it's one of it's one of my favorites. Like, uh, like an introduction to something that could be really cool to introduce into the show itself. Yeah. Of Frieza's family can be a really cool topic in the show. It can be a really cool topic. God damn it, Toriyama! It can be a really cool topic! You broke your mic. Actually, that's your mic. No, if it breaks, it becomes his mic. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, this would be my question, but I want. But it's too good to not bring it up right now. If I'm, I'm just going to say it now, so this is the, the thoughts with Mayhem right now. That Penis. if you, like, going back before the Broly movie, if you had to choose between Broly and Cooler, who would be the one you would make canon first? Cooler. It would be Cooler? What about you, Jinsu? Um, that burp is canon. Excuse me. For the, sake of, <laughs> no. for, the, for the sake of having more interesting villains, I would say Cooler. But for, the, for having new characters to, like, reinvent and to flourish more, especially when their old iteration was really bad, then I think Broly's pretty good. Bro, yeah, bro, they're they're kind of bad to be kind of like in the way that Toriyama would have both the characters. Like obviously, what he did with Broly, he's not gonna kill Broly or anything like that. He's gonna have he's gonna do exactly what he did. He's gonna make him a new Z fighter. Right. Question of do you think they would have to change it uh, in any way? Kind of similar to how they changed so much with Broly. I don't. I think Cooler's just sep- like all he's gonna be the Hulk of this Marvel team. Yes. Wait, They're not cooler, Broly. Wait, Broly, yeah. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, wait a second. <laughs> I was like, I'll be honest, I was looking at you just like, I'll accept it. I'll, I'll accept it. it. I'll but, figure it out. <laughs> I think cooler could literally have been like, I feel like with cooler, it could be easily explained that it's like Frieza had like this quadrant of galaxies that were his, and but it, like, and kind of like when Frieza was like reclaiming his own territory, cooler could be like reinvade, it could be seeing that his brother would like just came back, so obviously he might be taking that advantage. So Frieza might be going to Goku and them for help against his brother. That would be cool. I feel if... like I feel like he would be like Frieza Square. Like he actually would be the more threatening Frieza. Right, right. Like the My big brother! <laughs> oh god <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Like I think we because because Frieza 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 Frieza's death Frieza, Frieza's death Frieza. did cause a, a power vacuum exactly yeah and so it's like like when when it was showing like whenever we see the Frieza force like reclaiming territory and all that kind of stuff that very much sets up the cooler force to be like a rival space dictator that could be right. taking over and trying and doing things better than what Frieza did. A rival superpower. And, and it could be more of like since King Cold Oh he could probably... be like he could be like Stalin. Like Frieza's the Napoleon Hitler and then his brother is Stalin. Exactly. Exactly. And <laughs> then and then King Hitler. Cold and then King Cold can kind of be like like in Cooler is actually was going in because Cooler probably uh, Cold probably didn't know that Frieza came back or something like that. It could be like a oh, whole a whole thing space with the family. Napoleon Hitler and then there's space uh what would it be uh Musa Tallinn. Space Musa Tallinn. Got it. But, um, but just imagine. Now, just imagine. <laughs> but, Daddy, I thought I was your favorite. Yes, you died, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kind of want you to get chopped up to fucking bits. <laughs> but, yeah, just imagining that, that King Cold would no, that Frieza would no longer be the favorite because he died and brought back and w- incited with the people that killed him. <laughs> yeah. That, 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 I feel like, could be, like, a good, like, plot of movie or something like that that it's just like frieza trying to regain control and it's just like him it's like the first time that frieza asks for help like directly to goku it's like his pride of asking goku is nothing compared to his fear of his brother oh my god yeah that would be that would be interesting but i feel like i feel like it would be i feel like it should be done a little bit differently maybe he doesn't he doesn't maybe he doesn't ask him for help directly 
or maybe or, or like he or like he go that cool the cooler he sends, force he sends a minion to ask for help oh yeah and it's just like he couldn't he couldn't come face to face no sir you know him <laughs> yeah yeah and like or like maybe like a minion comes up to the Zeus warriors and are like, like you gotta those... help the cooler is coming and he's fucking everyone up and he has Frieza like jailed and whatever is that cooler oh, oh my god Frieza's the damsel in distress no, like not not the damsel in distress, the bastard in distress. The bastard in distress. They're, they're, oh my god! They're not there to save him. They're just there to fuck up his brother. <laughs> yeah, they're they're more interested in killing the dragon than actually saving the princess. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! Am Stop I dressing only... me up in dresses, will you? But you look god so damn it, cute. I was to about them. to say, yeah. am I the only one that uh, just imagined Frieza but in a dress? And then cooler. Yes, in a, he must never know. <laughs> yeah. And then cooler in a a, a Bowser outfit. I'm just trying to follow the the, the, the script. God damn it! I'm sorry. I need to hear now. Just Chris Guerrero. Just Chris Guerrero is just freeze, 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 freeze. Ah, hey you, <laughs> brother. <laughs> Little shit brother versus big shit brother. Yeah, that this is bitch, just, this bitch, this bitch, this bitch. That basically <laughs> just this bitch. it wouldn't be so that way because cooler coming for revenge, uh, avenging his brother doesn't fit what has been established with the characters. I will say that it's like my little shit brother, like was all this, uh, uh, but now I care. Now I care that he's dead. What it is in the movie is it's supposed to be more of a hmm. I want to see if I can kill the guy that killed my brother. Yeah. That sounds like a massive one-up on my part. Yeah. But but this different version that it's more of Cooler being blindsided by the Z fighters instead of it, like going can after you imagine going directly it's, to his oh, brother. Oh, so you're the ones that gave me extra work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're the ones. <laughs> yeah. But but yeah, so I, th- I think Cooler just has... Cooler is the thing that could develop Frieza more. That's like what Frieza has become after Super... Could definitely be improved with Cooler. That's what I say. Mm-hmm. Overall, I would say, yeah, this is a good movie. Uh, the original version, including uh, TFS, like uh, both versions, I will say, are pretty good. The, the bridge stays that, like, true. When the bridge stays this close to the original, you, yeah. that's how you can tell that it's that it was a good one. Yeah. Uh, is uh, any other uh, uh, new thought with Mayhem? <laughs> Star Wars effects and all. <laughs> Uh, can you? Uh, oh, there's your thought with mayhem. Star Wars. Star Wars. <laughs> what, thoughts, with Star mayhem, Wars. thoughts with mayhem. Can would, you do the Wilhelm scream? Would Frieza's fifth form look more like Shredder or more like a different kind of samurai? What kind of samurai? If you can look up a samurai, I, w- I wouldn't think it'd be a samurai. I think it would be. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Try to grab another like '80s villain reference. No, I just realized something. <laughs> That joke that what? we did with the with the Peaches what? song, with the Bowser Peaches song, and the freeze, a freeze that. I'm pretty sure, Jinzy, you might be pulling it up right now. The freeze, a freeze, a freeze. That's not it at all. Shit. That's not it at all. <laughs> That's his normal theme. But just the uh, the freeze, a freeze, a freeze. That's freeze, literally uh, yeah. That's literally the Peaches song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I was gonna. I was making a reference with like Star Wars. I'm oh yeah. Star Wars to that song. <laughs> it's time for it to watch Star Wars. But um, but what what design would you want his fifth form to go into the direction of? I'm, I'm popping it up now. Like instead of a gold or black, I think form. it should be something new, and then it should be like a reveal of it being like some primal form, or some primal frost demon shit. Right, right. Like, or like, like Eskimo Inuit, maybe. Maybe, or maybe he becomes like a dragon, or a dragon, like a really no. gross like snake dragon. I think I think a serpent okay. m- instead of a dragon. Like don't don't Close go to too- the serpent because uh okay we went eighties villain with super shredder right yeah go mumra. What the hell is that? Do you not remember is... Thundercats villain Mumra? Never watched Thundercats. Jesus Christ, man! <laughs> what a what a, what a niche, deep cut! What a niche! That's fucking... not very niche. Come on, everybody knows uh, th- knows Thundercats. Here's the thing. Thundercats. Here's the thing. Right now in this room, it is. <laughs> Matt Mercer was in the 2011 series. Like Mumra. as like as the as himself. <laughs> I I kind of don't like it because it's it's the bat wings. Nah, it, he was bat wings, but imagine like the the. Uh, like features of the head. No, I, I'm no. not thinking that. I'm not think- I, I I was thinking. I think it should be. It should be. It like should a, definitely be armor. Well, armor, okay. and then like with a crown or something. Yeah, like a king's crown. And I'm pretty sure shogun and em- and China and Japanese emperors don't. Fight through have... you, Cobra Commander. <laughs> what about a Chinese emperor? In the same way with like Chaozu. He just stole Gohan's hat. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He still goes ass. I think that could work. Because no. it's like because Shredder no, goes... he transforms. He becomes Cobra Commander. Actually, that unfortunately could work. <laughs> Dude, he just transforms. Bucket becomes head. Cobra Commander. That buckethead. <laughs> But well, it, in all fairness, fan art can make him actually kind of look a little cooler. Look up, look up like the crown. Uh, look up the dress of the Russian czar. Russian czar. Which C Z C Z A R. It, see if there's anything with that. Because I think Freezer would go more Russian. Actually, thinking about it now. I don't think so. No. This is a normal king. He looks stupid. I look at bizarre armor. Like Russian. Like I. I think. I think that is like a. A good direction to go with Frieza specifically, even though he is space Nepal Hitler. I think actually making the reference with his um, with a Russian theme, because like his whole like. What about be- Mongolian? Mongolian, nah. Because uh, I'm trying to think. I don't think I don't think it should be like a a plant like an Earth warlord type thing. I think it should be more alien. It should be look more alien. More alien. Like Cause, like cause, the pred- ooh predator part of part of what part oh, of what predator. makes part of what makes Cooler's fourth form so cool is that it looks more alien. It's like a it's like a next step a little yeah. bit. Yeah. But like he he looks like an alien and then he looks more like an alien. What about the predator? That could work. Yeah. If he was geared up, that'd yeah. be cool. Yeah. But it's like you you kind of see like that kind of like crown that one predator has. Skeletor. There you go. Skeletor. No. He becomes Skeletor. Skeletor. All right. No. They finally they finally become the greatest villain I don't, ever. I don't, I don't like the hood. <laughs> the hood doesn't fit him, man. <laughs> oh, metal cooler with fifth form. <laughs> okay, I'm actually now wondering. Can you, real quick, can you imagine? Uh, like, uh, I actually kind of want to get it commissioned in the future now of just like a fifth form inspired a bit by Skeletor. So it'd be like. This, uh, like, real creep... Like, basically, he's using the powers of hell. Actually embracing the And so he looks de- more like a reaper than anything. I, that's the thing, is that Frieza's called a frost demon, but he's more space I sci-fi. Look up. Dude. You're pointing at me. Super Skeletor, or whatever it was. Oh, the Remember? one from... Yeah, from the Netflix one. That it, It's still so funny to me with that Netflix Masters of the Universe, just how, good, how much better the second season is, because it actually does what people wanted from it. <laughs> the first season was just set up, look but up not champion it, it, most of the setup could have been done in like one and a half episodes in that first season. I think, I think it should have more spikes. Dude. More spikes. What about that? Champion Skeletor. Don't show me. Show him. I've seen it. <laughs> that's a little bit better with the spikes and shit. Yeah. That, that, that's definitely a better Dude, direction. There you go. I'm honestly going to like look into that in the future of like what, I, when I can afford it, honestly, just uh, commission one of those. That's a good tattoo right there. That is him doing a move. Exactly. Like doing one of the that's moves. A, that's, a, that's, a, that's a button in Dragon Ball Fighters. <laughs> yes. Anyway, also known as one of the coolest him? moves. What's next is the Revengeance of Cooler. We got the re- we just watched the Revenge of Cooler. Now we got the return. We're playing re- Metal Gear Solid Revengeance? Revengeance. Sandy, <laughs> I realize I like beating up senators. <laughs> Live to win. Rules of nature! Rules of nature! You got another reference from that, uh, Jinsu? Make America great. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Nano machines, Ow. Jinsu! Nano oh. machines! <laughs> you gotta make <laughs> make America an omelet again. <laughs> make America a nano machine again. <laughs> Omelets. We gotta fret over every egg. Egg. Say you it. can't freeze every cooler and then expect an omelet, Goku. What? Nano machines. All right, to the hospital with you, bitch. If you want to see more of our content, you can find our YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter on our link tree at linktree slash green villains. That's l i n k t r dot e e slash green villains.